What's your problem, huh? It's a camera. Stop freaking out. Yeah, that's right. That's right. He knows his boss. Hey guys, it's MJ, and welcome back to Pet Adventures again. So today I thought I could just sit down and talk with you a little bit about beginner reptiles. I know there's a lot of people out there who uh, used to come to the store, like at the retail store and stuff that I used to work at. Well, two of them. A lot of people come wanting their first lizard, their first snake, that kind of thing. So to sum it all up in one video, I thought I would kind of touch up on all the beginner lizards and snakes that you could get as pets uh, that would probably be suited to you according according to your personality and also keep in mind that none of these are in a specific order they're all beginner reptiles so for the most part they're going to be at the same level and also what's great about a lot of my pets is basically all of them are beginner reptiles um, all of my pets in general are beginner pets uh, except for the lizard that I have behind me I don't know if he's showing himself. No, he's not showing himself. He's uh, hiding because he freaked out when I put the camera on for some reason. But um, <laughs> he's not a beginner pet at all. Um, his care is very similar to a chameleon. And, you know, well, he's very intermediate. And um, through experience, uh, I messed up with him a lot. And, you know, if I hadn't done more research, uh, he probably wouldn't still be alive to be honest with you uh, like I said I, I'm learning through experience I still learn through experience I have learned through experience and research and you know I mean he's still kind of in recovery but he's so much more healthier than he ever was so luckily you know and I he's also not very handleable um, he's a he's what's called a Cuban night and no lizard you wouldn't really see those <laughs> anywhere in the pet shop you'd only see them either in your backyard in Florida or in a reptile shop but I mean I have a hard enough time as it is getting him out of his cage to clean it um, so definitely not handleable and if you hear any munching that would be my rat <laughs> so without further ado let me get to the video <laughs> I'm sorry my gecko's like behind his rock just staring at me as I do this so I feel kind of pressured at the moment <laughs> of course as you guys know one of mine is gonna have to be leopard geckos they are my absolute top beginner reptile in general just because the care is easy they're super docile they're small um, you know lots of kids can hold them just as long as the parents around to you know kind of monitor everything but in general leopard geckos are definitely the top beginner uh, reptile lizard everything um, and there's this big versus between bearded dragons and leopard geckos and I will get to that later but definitely on my list probably number one I know I said no specific order but probably number one definitely leopard geckos all they need is a heat mat to get their direct heat um, and the substrate can be like paper towels or reptile carpet as long as it's not sand. Uh, they just need a bowl of calcium, a bowl of water, no specific lighting, and you know, like at least like a 10 to 20, I prefer 20, but 10 gallon and up. So definitely the easiest lizard I've ever had. Not even kidding, sometimes I forget that they're even there. <laughs> And I mean, when they're older, all you have to do is feed them every other day. They don't need to even eat every single day. They don't have a fast metabolism. So, very easy. Another on my list would have to be a ball python. Ball pythons are the most docile snake I have ever held in my life. And I have held a good variety of different kinds of snakes. And definitely, ball pythons are the easiest to handle. Uh, they're very, very sweet. I've only been bitten by mine once. and it doesn't really count because I was trying to feed him and at the time I wasn't using tongs so I can't tell you how easy it is to take care of a ball python um, the only thing that makes them a bit advanced is they do get up to five feet which is a little much for some people um, and I mean when shedding time comes you really have to be monitoring them and feeding them 
the rodents and stuff some people aren't very comfortable with but if you're okay with you know most of that stuff that I just mentioned ball pythons ugh, so easy snakes in general sometimes can be very easy uh, it, obviously it depends on the snake but a lot of snakes I've taken care of personally are, are very very easy but I mean you know the care is kind of the same you know just a regular heat map for for heat source no special lighting uh, 10 gallon tank when they're baby babies you know like hatchlings and then when they're older they'll have to be up to like a 40 gallon tank which is the same as our fish tank here but I mean it's not that bad honestly and I mean you only feed them once a week and I don't even feed mine once a week the way I do it is I put down anytime, like every time I feed him, I put it down, you know, like in my phone, um, like the day I fed him. And then I just wait till he poops again to make sure he's fully digested everything, and then he gets to eat again. <laughs> um, most of the time when he hasn't digested anything, I've tried it, he usually doesn't have an appetite anyway. He eats a few times every month, so that's good enough for me. Sometimes, I, I would say like, sometimes like, twice a month it really depends on you know how much he's eating at a time but I mean he eats enough third on my list would definitely have to be cresties I love crested geckos I have always wanted one the day that I actually got mine I was so excited at work that all I kept talking about with everybody at work was just like oh my god I can't wait to go home and see my crestie <laughs> I was so excited when I got him and uh, he's very, very easy, like by far the easiest. Might even be easier than uh, leopard geckos just because they don't need any specific heat source as long as your room stays around like 70s to 80s. So like 78 to 80, something like that is good. And that's what we're usually around. There is no heat source whatsoever you need, as long as you have a stable room temperature. Now, it depends on where you live. If you do live somewhere where it gets really cold, you might have to get a like a heat light or something like that, just to keep them warm. But I mean, Crusties, they only need like a medium-sized Exoterra. Um, let me show you. This right here is what my baby Tarantula lives in right now. And just picture this, but pretty big. like. Like the size of this tank that you see back here, just picture that in this form. That's the size you'll need for a crusty, and I mean, it's not that bad, honestly. And what's great about crusties is they actually don't have to have um, like crickets and mealworms. Like I've seen some people obviously feed them that, but I feed mine just the crusty gecko diet. Um, this is the Pangea fruit mix complete with insects. Um, I think after I'm done with this, I'm going to get him like the watermelon one. So we're going to try that out. But they just need this. You just mix it up with some water and you put it in their cage. Um, and you just feed them like every day or you can do every other day. I do mine every other day because mine eats so much that he's getting kind of fat. <laughs> so I'm trying to kind of, I don't want him to get too fat to the point of where it's like a problem. So. Obviously, I feed them every other day, but like I said, super easy. You just give them their little baby food mix, and you also need a Repti Ledge. It's basically just the two bowls, the water bowl and the Crested Gecko Diet Bowl, and they just sit on the side of the glass, and they're magnified. And we do this because Crested Geckos don't really like going down on the ground too much to drink. Um, I honestly think they could if they really needed to, but they prefer to be drinking in a high place and eating in a high place. They are arboreal, so whatever you get them, make sure that they have things to climb on because they do not like being on the ground, they do not feel safe. I'm not going to go too in depth with it, but they're super easy lizards, super easy geckos. Just obviously make sure you always pay attention to them and make sure that they're healthy. Next on my list, I think this is my fourth one, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it is. Uh, next on my list would definitely have to be bearded dragons. Like I said, there's no particular order. This is just a very good beginner uh, lizard. Now, like I said, there's a versus between leopard geckos or bearded dragons. And in my opinion, I only tell you leopard geckos because number one, I have leopard geckos. I know the maintenance completely on them. Um, and I know that bearded dragons, when they do get older, they do have to have up to a 40 to 50 gallon tank definitely prefer a 50 if you can get a hold of it. They do 
get quite large, not too large, but they get, a, I think it's about two feet if you include the whole tail. Oh yeah. Now many places will tell you, like the pet stores, they will tell you that the bearded dragon is probably the best to have as beginner lizard. And there are certain reasons why they are one of the biggest beginner lizards. Number one, super docile. You can handle them from when they're babies to when they're fully grown. They're always the same. They'll always just stay in your hand or stay on your shoulder. Super, super docile. Even more docile than a leopard gecko. But with all that out on the plate, there are some things that you do have to watch out for. Bearded dragons do need a lot more heat than a leopard gecko. See, the thing is, a leopard gecko, they always have their heat mat on, so they can always get their heat source at any time of the day, any time of the night. <laughs> but bearded dragons, they need a heat bulb and a UV bulb, and the UV can be on for about, I would say, 10 hours in the day, but they need to have constant heat to always fully digest. So this means that they'll need heat at night and they'll need heat during the day. And this is something that I have learned and that a lot of people make mistakes with. A lot, a lot, a lot of people neglect the hell out of bearded dragons. They get a lot of abuse sometimes. Um, like for instance, a lot of people decide to get sand for the bearded dragons and leopard geckos. It's not a good solution because what they do is, with their food, mainly their crickets, um, when they strike to get their crickets, they intake a lot of the sand, and that gives them impaction. And this is one of the leading deaths that happen to leopard geckos and bearded dragons, because people will just can't resist themselves and use sand, when it could just be so much easier getting a solid substrate it's not gonna hurt them. Trust me, it is not worth <laughs> your lizard's life. But I mean, if you can get down UV lighting, uh, heating, which should be on you know, at night and during the day. So you should have a night light and a day light if you want. And right now for my lizard, we're actually using a nighttime heat bulb that's on throughout the whole day. And it keeps his temperatures around the 80s for him at all times. So he never ever has to get cold um, and he goes to it when he really needs it, and if he doesn't need it, he just goes to his cool side. And, uh, his cool side right now is 81, but it will cool down later at night. And there are also other things that people just sometimes neglect. Um, not any I can really think of at the moment other than the heat and the sand. But, I mean, when there's health issues, some people, they go to the pet store when they should be going to the vet. I don't know. Many people do not want to go to the vet when something is really really wrong with their their lizards or any pet really <laughs> but trust me it is the easiest option if you think about it because I mean especially things like a bearded dragon and a leopard gecko I would definitely take any of my reptiles to the vet and here's why first of all your reptile mo most likely will live long okay the the leopard geckos live 15 years the ball pythons, they live up to 20 years. Um, you know, bearded dragons, if in good health and taken very good care of, which means taking them to the vet, um, you know, they live about eight to 10 years, depending on how well you keep them. So even eight years is still really, really good. Um, so, I mean, it's just worth it. If I feel like I'm gonna have a pet that either has a strong bond with me or lives a long time. It's worth just giving him like one or two trips to the vet every now and then. I mean, seems logical. But if you can keep up with all of those small things, they are not hard things, <laughs> you can definitely keep a bearded dragon. Definitely a good pet. Make sure you get them the get him the proper lighting, proper cage, and make sure he gets health checks every now and then. And you'll be good pretty easy pretty easy lizard and they are sort of bonding little lizards um, so I mean you know definitely easy <laughs> next on my list would definitely have to be a corn snake corn snakes are awesome I really like them um, the only reason why I didn't decide to get a corn snake and I decided to get a ball python 
is because, like I said, my first encounter with the corn snake didn't go so well. Uh, I was cleaning its cage on my first day um, in one of my one of the pet shops that I worked at, and he was so hyper that I had to literally just keep pushing him back, and it was just not a good impression on me. I didn't like the hyperness, but I have met some really nice corn snakes. I've never been bitten by a corn snake, well, not in a fully grown adult corn snake. Some of the babies get really, really scared when they're held because they're so small. Corn snakes are super, super, super easy. Same thing with them, they just need a heat mat. In some ways, they can be easier than ball pythons because they eat pretty much every single time. They're hungry, hungry, hungry hippos. So just keep in mind, if you are getting a corn snake, you'll never have to really worry about feeding. It's it's very rare that a corn snake won't eat. They're very hyper snakes, so I mean if you're looking for something that is kind of cr gonna crawl around you and be curious and stuff like that, a little bit more low maintenance than a ball python. They get the same size as a ball python as far as length, about five feet, but um, they, they're not gonna get as girthy, you know, not as fat. So they stay a little bit more slim, so you won't have to get quite as big as of rodents as you would a ball python. So they're pretty cool. And lastly on my list, from all my experience, I would definitely say that one of the beginner lizards, not the top top beginner, but one of the beginner lizards would be a blue tongue skink. Um, they get fairly large, but not so large to the point of where you can't take care of them. They'll need about maybe like a, mm, I'm gonna say 50 to 60 gallon tank, um, something around that range, I guess. But you know, a fairly large tank, bigger than a a 40 or 50. But um, yeah, I would I would say I would say 50 is like I guess okay, but I'm not I'm not sure exactly how wide it would be. Um, but anyways, a blue tongue skink is fairly easy. Um, they eat a huge variety of stuff. <laughs> So there's so much stuff you can give them. You can give them, I think it is, uh, soft cat food. You can give them eggs. They love egg. Um, you can give them rapashi. There's rapashi you can feed them. Um, and like there's like the insects, you know, the protein. They eat lots of like fruits and veg. So huge variety on the diet. They just need a little bit of UV on for like 10 to 12 hours, just the same as like a bearded dragon. Um, but I mean, yeah, they're really easy. I love blue tongue skinks. I've always wanted one. I still don't have one, but I have hung around blue tongue skinks a lot from working in the retail shop that I used to work at. <clears throat> And they're super darling, never been bitten by one, they're always super sweet, and um, they're not even that flighty. And I mean, there's like no real defense that they can even do to you in the wild. All they do is show their blue tongue to their predators in hopes that that predator will think that it's poison or, or venom, venomous, but <laughs> I mean, it's kind of cute. And they have like tiny little legs, so they can't really run away very fast. But they're super, super sweet. Oh my goodness. I I technically love them more than I would like a bearded dragon or something. But <laughs> um, I will get one one day. Just not at the moment. Um, but that is a beginner, I would say. As long as you can keep the UV up. Make sure the temperatures are right. Make sure it's not too hot, too cold. Um, they, they do pretty well just around like the 70s to 80s. And I mean, obviously, make sure you never get any substrates that they can take in. Sand is basically bad for, for most most uh, reptiles, I would say. But they're pretty cool. I like them, super darling. And, uh, and yeah, I would say that that's pretty much it for this video. Now, if you did like this video, please give it a good thumbs up and subscribe. Tell your friends and um, let me know what other kind of videos and content that you want to see on this channel. Um, there's lots of other things I could talk about. I could talk about the not-so-beginner reptiles that are great, but not the best for beginners. And I also have another video. I'm not going to spoil it too much, but it has something to do with my rats. But um, <laughs> I have one of those coming up, so let me know if you're excited to see that. Uh, I'll see you guys next time, and thank you so, so much for tuning in at Pet Adventures, and I'll see you next time. Bye!
and Jay. Uh, today I thought I would just talk a little bit about goldfish. Nothing fancy. <laughs> fancy, get it? Fancy goldfish. Anyways, um, yeah, I thought I would just talk about goldfish. And uh, just a quick reminder here, I have been streaming on the live stream You Now lately. Uh, it's just a little, like, it's just the most well-known live stream, I guess. And 